storm stays on this track with the forecasted intensity, let's just say it's not going to be good. You need to prepare. Now, all those other ones missed us. 911, what's your emergency? The Highway Patrol troopers are there along with an AMR ambulance and fire truck. An all time record flood coming down the Mississippi River. It has shifted back further to the west, and anywhere where we are seeing this yellow, that is the, of course, the potential. It is coming in fast, and it is, it is deepening quickly, and we are going to see fire to put their own safety, and the safety of their families first, by moving to safe ground. It just picked up between Saturday and Sunday, and you could almost just see the way the skies looked on Sunday morning, that we were going to have something different than we'd ever had before. That morning, about 7.30, the water started in. I knew I didn't make the right decision. I should have left. I actually thought that both of us would drown. My son and I, we were trying to get out a window in the house with my cell phone went off. I said, hello. This woman, she said, how are you doing? I said, ma'am, I said, we are trying to get out of the house. And she says, Albert, we're coming to get you. And the phone went dead. Highway 49 was totally covered with trees, and telephone poles, and debris. And had to clear a lane out, but she wouldn't have it any other way. She had to go down with that first convoy. She never stopped. She never wanted to sit around the command post. She was out there in that devastation and destruction, meeting people, trying to get help to people. She was right in the middle of it with us, and that it was one mess we were living in, one total mess. Two National Guardsmen and two state troopers arrived at the house, and the first things were, are y'all all right? I said, we're fine. I said, what are y'all doing? Miss Marsha Barber sent us over here to check on you. You know, when we saw her, we realized that things was gonna get better. When she arrives, people know that there is help, that there is attention, and that there is heart. You looked up first responder in the dictionary, we think you'd find her name first. Words to describe Marsha, passionate, smart, savvy, Caring. Humble, tenacious, forgiving, driven. Says what she thinks, has strong opinions, and has an uncanny ability of being right. She's a first responder when the cameras aren't running, and that, I think, has touched a lot of people's hearts and certainly touched their lives. Marsha never lets being the first lady get in her way. I would dare say that most of the first responders that came in touch or contact with Marsha did not know that Marsha was the first lady. Once they realized who she was, were just totally in awe that here Marsha was in khaki pants and a shirt sleeves rolled up and out there in the mud fighting the mosquitoes and picking up the debris and hugging children and making sure that water and food and shelter was provided. Maybe the person who needed help was a victim of the storm or survivor, but maybe it was a first responder. Maybe it was someone who was trying to do their job, but they had to have some red tape knocked out of the way or some obstacle knocked down, and Marsha was willing to try to do it. The responders that I dealt with, and I'm telling you, you know, sometimes I think there was a half a million of them, there probably wasn't, but it seemed that way. Most every one of them was just they couldn't believe that our First Lady was here and, and that they could communicate with her, too. I think they think what we know, that she's a dynamic person. Uh, she gets things done. She's not talk, she walks the walk, and uh, if she gets involved, something will happen. Every time we had a meeting or briefing, Miss Barbara was involved. You don't find people like that every day, and, and people really appreciated her from Katrina, with the tornadoes, the flood, she rolled up her sleeve and she went to work like everybody else. And when you see somebody doing that, especially the First Lady, you know, let's give you all encouragement to want to get out there and work twice as hard. Nobody knew what would happen if the oil came, did it, if it get in the oysters, would it ruin them, would, it, would the shrimp be toxic? I can tell you before, I mean, getting boom and trying to protect the areas that uh, were needed to be protected, uh, she was very instrumental in helping us with that. The Mississippi Cares International, and the nonprofit that owns the Marsha Barber Resource Center, has named two other facilities, one in Haiti, a children's educational center, and one in the southern Sudan, a health and fitness center, for Marsha. And, and Marsha's only reaction has been, it's, I want to go there, can you get me there? Whatever the situation was, she was in charge of it. And that impressed me more than anything. I don't think she knows what no is. 
<laughs> she was trying to help us with Walmart, and I'll tell you one thing, I wouldn't want her as an enemy. I can tell you that right now. Whether it's releasing turtles back into the Gulf after the Gulf oil spill, or whether it's being right there on the spot within hours of the tornado hitting Yazoo City, uh, she's the one that wants to be on the front line. She doesn't wait to be asked. She goes out there where she's needed. First responders kind of feel uh, that she's one of them. I think she represents what all of us want to be. I think she represents what Mississippi is. Marsha is a great citizen, a role model for all future first ladies in Mississippi. We say any day the governor comes to town, it's a good day, but we found that uh, any day the first lady comes to town, it's even a better day. Marsha, you once asked me what I did. I still haven't figured out what I do other than piddle, but I know what you do. You care for Mississippians and you give all of your energies and efforts to create a better world for those folks. Thank you. Marsha, thank you for putting yourself out there, being willing to step up to the plate and add your own personal touch to being Mississippi's First Lady. Thank you for being just that smart and just that caring and not being afraid to show us who you are. You have been a true friend, a supporter of the patrol from day one. Whenever we was called to a disaster, we didn't worry. You was gonna be there. You stayed the course until it was completed. You didn't leave us alone. I just want to thank you and appreciate whatever you've done for us and also to, for the people of the state of Mississippi. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and may God bless you. Miss Marsha, thank you for everything you've done for us and the people of Hancock County. God bless you, we love you, and we wish you the best of luck. Miss Marsha, we want to thank you for all you've done for us. We are really going to be a sad day when you leave the uh, State House up in Jackson, but remember this, that we will uh, still be down here. We still have the best seafood and the best Mardi Gras on the coast, so you come back to the past anytime you want. And thank you, Miss Marsha, for what you've done for me, for my family, and for the people of Mississippi. God bless you. Marsha, after being my First Lady, and Sterling and Reeves and the family's First Lady, and in the state's first lady, it's totally appropriate and not at all surprising that today you're being made the first lady of first responders. You deserve it.